Cadence Loop a Day, where every day we're going to be creating a new musical loop using Cadence, which is the music sandbox game, until we release on Steam Early Access in early September. So last night I kind of missed out on Loop a Day because I was busy participating in Traffic Jam. And what that was was a collaboration between Traffic Furket, I'm probably not saying it right, uh, which is the local Swedish sort of authority responsible for transport infrastructure in Sweden, and Stugan, which is the accelerated program that I'm currently a part of while working on Cadence. And because Traffic Verkit are principal sponsors of Stugan, and you know they've very graciously provided their uh, you know facilities for us to stay in for a couple of months, the idea was that we were going to have a game jam to think about the future of transportation. And, you know, initially this, this sort of sounded like quite a corporate sort of idea it wasn't that exciting, but then I kind of thought about it a bit and ended up teaming up with one of my fellow Stuganeers, Mark Backler, and we made something which I'm actually really proud of. Uh, it's called Error Prone, and I'm going to show it to you now. So basically the, the idea behind Error Prone is that self-driving cars are going to be a thing that's happening in the near future and you know there's a lot of sort of anxiety about self-driving cars and public acceptance of them so I wanted to make a game that showed how self-driving cars are great because you know unlike human drivers they're much less likely to cause accidents they're far more efficient and you know perhaps most most conveniently to me they they don't get stuck in traffic jams nearly in the same way that humans do. So in this game, what you can see is you can see 26 cars. Uh, it's one for every letter of the keyboard. And if you just leave the game, the cars will just carry on circling around each other. The idea is each car is a completely autonomous self-driving car, keeping a perfect distance to the car in front of it. But now I'm going to start it again. And what happens is as soon as you press any key on your keyboard, you actually take control of the car. So you can see here, I'm now controlling the little F car. And you can instantly see that with my imperfect human inputs, I'm now causing traffic jams. And, you know, obviously, as I assume control of more cars, I end up causing even more traffic good luck. And, of course, humans aren't very good, so they cause traffic accidents. And, of course, as you've no anyone who's ever sat on the highway behind a traffic accident knows that it's really painful, really frustrating, and... Most importantly, the, it ends human lives. So the idea behind this game is that it's actually a game for up to 26 people. So if you can fit 26 people around a keyboard, they can all play at the same time. And the thing that I like about this game is that it's kind of a, it's, it's an anti-statement that, you know, obviously it's more fun if you have people playing, but actually the only way you can win the game is to not play at all, you know, because as soon as humans are driving cars, they're just causing chaos on the roads. So anyway, that's error prone. Uh, we actually managed to win the jam uh, yesterday, which is very cool. We got a, we got a bottle of bubbly as a prize. Um, but, you know, it wasn't really about competition. It was very friendly. All the other participants were mostly from Stugan as well. Um, but now my idea yesterday was for Loop a Day was to try and create some music in cadence for the game. Unfortunately, it ran out of time because it was just a single day, single day jam. So, you know, what you just saw was the product of about 12 hours. So instead, today I'm going to try and create some of that music. Um, I'm still pretty sort of burn out from yesterday. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and create something very simple, very sort of subtle ambient textures. And let's see how we go with that. All right. So I've started Unity. I'm going to do this straight in the editor. All right, here we go. So first thing I'm going to do is open up sandbox mode and uh, right up off the bat, I'm going to open up the editor, uh, select that. So by default, I'm not really such a fan of the sound. Uh, I was thinking something a bit more subtle, a bit more airy. So I'm just going to open up the most basic sound, which is basically a sine wave. So it's, it hasn't got harmonics. It's very mellow. Just 
turn the sound up a little so you can hear it. All right, so, you know, it's very subtle, uh, just something to have in the background. And, you know, error prone is kind of a little cutesy game. So I'm going to try and see if I can create something just a little bit sort of airy, a little bit wistful. Um, I'm not a composer. Uh, this is where you'll start to see the limits of my music, musical abilities, but um, that shouldn't matter with Cadence. Uh, So what I was doing there is just trying to find a little motive, find a melody that I like. And let's try and go ahead and create that. All right, so I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna take these notes out. Um, just have to set that to be our start point. And let's create some notes. So I had a sort of eight, I have a sort of two bar pattern, so I'm gonna want like eight nodes. Um, One, two, three, four. And I'm going to turn it around and come back the other way. Two, three, four. Very straightforward, very simple. And let's try assign some of those tones. So, right now you can see that the, the interface is a bit obnoxious, it gets in the way, so you can't actually see what you're doing. Uh, that's definitely something we're going to try figure out. I'm not. I'm not too sure yet how we're going to do that, but we'll see what we can come up with. So it's a very simple pattern. It's just going the first to the third, to the second, to the fourth. And then the second time it plays, it's doing the same thing, except that instead of going to the fourth, it's going to the fifth. Let's see what that sounds like. It's a little bit slow. Let's see if I can maybe give it a little bit more life by making it a bit faster. Okay, that's a bit too fast. All right, now there's actually something about this that I'm going to change using one of the developer interfaces is I don't actually like the way that the delay is sounding. Um, so right now there's no way to change the delay in cadence, but I, it's just something that we eventually want to put in the game, but uh, you know, again, one of those things that we'd kind of get to eventually. Okay, a bit confusing. So before what was happening is the delay was kind of creating this run on melancholy effect, but seeing as we want something a bit more uh, Lighthearted than that, I've just kind of flattened out the timing a bit.
All right, so it's super simple. Um, what I'm kind of hoping is that that will create a nice texture when laid on top of the game. So I'm actually just going to play them next to each other and see what happens. Uh, okay, I just need to get the game running. Okay, so it's kind of creating a nice little nursery ground effect, which I quite like, uh, but I'm going to... There's something that's just not quite right about it. However, I've just gone and killed my scene there, which is one of the dangers of working in the editor, is that I haven't actually saved my work. Obviously, by the time the cadence releases, this will be a lot smoother, a lot slicker. Um, let's see if we can go very quickly recreate that. Okay, come in here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, you can see it's kind of gone way out into the distance, but anyway, we can work with that. So it's one. Three. Two. Four. What's going on here? All right, this is going the wrong way, so we're just gonna do that. It's one, it's three, it's two, it's five. All right, so very, we're almost back to where we started. Just gonna choose this sound. Get my del delay set up again. If you want to hear the difference between those two delays, I'm actually going to change it in real time, see if you can spot the difference. It's quite subtle, but it's making a difference. All right. I think I know what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to keep this track like this, kind of very mellow, and then I'm going to add a second track. Right. Sorry, getting a little bit lost here. Aha, uh, we have a bug. The track interface isn't working. All right, maybe that's a good sign that we'll we'll leave it there for today. But like you see, you know, what I was thinking was that the sound by itself was very, uh, it wasn't really creating much presence. Um, so you could come in here and you know, really give it a bit of edge or keep it a bit mellow. Yeah, I think in the end, I prefer this one a bit more than that. All right, so there we go. We're gonna leave it at that for today and be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, same place. Cheers. <laughs>